Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop. The exact model for this one is a Lenovo ThinkPad E15 which shows right in here or inside the BIOS or on the sticker on the bottom. And in this video I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can clean up the motherboard and clean up the heatsink and repaste your CPU or GPU if in case you have a version with a GPU. Alright, this, uh, this servicing should be done once every year, year and a half, or I'll say every eight months, depending how often you use, how dirty is the table, it's, up, it's sucking all the dust in. So you can clog up the heatsink and it can overheat the CPU and the thermal paste can go bad after a while. This is not a benchmark, this is just pretty much a servicing uh, laptop. It's just pretty much as you service your car, you take it for oil change, this is the same thing. All right. By doing a servicing, you're not changing anything in the configuration, it's pretty much the same way it's gonna be left, the windows, the configuration. This is a Gen 2. So if you guys have a question, this is a Lenovo ThinkPad E15 Gen 2. It comes really engraved right on the bottom case. All right, I'm gonna go over the tools that I'll be using. First thing first, power it off. Tool number one would be a good screwdriver set. I'll be using a I fix the screwdriver set as they have all the bits that you need to do this service. If you get the pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, for the opening tools, grab yourself a guitar pick. A metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and power. And after that, you need a used or new toothbrush. Make sure you clean it up and there's no debris or anything on it. You need a workshop towel. A good workshop towel, I recommend you to get this one. And I'll explain why because of the second product. The second one is an alcohol. I'll recommend you anything over 90, 95, 98% or 99% that will be better. Isoporopolic or isoporopolic alcohol. But these are not conductive. So as soon as you put an alcohol on the towel and you want to clean this component or the CPU thermal paste, the towel will get ripped apart if there's any tiny capacitors strangled in between the fibers. So it will not damage the motherboard. But if you use the microfiber towels, those things can damage the components on the board. So these two, and the other thing is a good thermal paste. You can use whichever thermal paste you want. You can use a Noctua, Arctic MX4, or you can go over the board with a thermal grizzly cryonaut. These are one of the best. There's an Arctic MX6, which is really good too and affordable. Or you can go over the board with a really good one, which is a thermal grizzly. So uh, in this case, we're gonna put an Arctic MX4 as requested for, by client. Uh, I think I'm not missing anything. If anything is missing, I'll let you guys know during the process. All right, we're gonna grab ourselves a screw bit, Phillips number one. And we're gonna start loosening up all the screws. All the screws will not come out. They have a little C lock on them. It will prevent them from coming out. And it does have a secondary effect that will, as soon as you rotate, it will push the cover away from each other and it will create a gap right in here so you can stick the guitar pick or the opening tool easily. So as soon as I move this one here, you're gonna see the case is trying to push away from itself. So pretty much what are we gonna do here? You're gonna go all around and we're gonna rotate the screws until you feel like it's they are loosened up and just do a few more turns, few clicks and then let go. Don't stay there just on a screen because you're gonna be there for the whole year. So I'm gonna just unscrew them also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. All right, now that we're uh, on a screw them, so we're going to open the cover by sticking guitar pick right in there, and we're just going to peel it upward, twist it, and you're going to hit extra click sound so that the clips are getting loose, so to the front. And do the side, stick it right there, and I'm lifting up this way so I can lift up over the jacks to the left and the right. All right, now that we got those ones in, and then you can just lift it up, grab it, wiggle it a little bit. And there's a clip in the middle and it will release that clip in the middle. Just yank it a little bit slowly and it will get loose. That clip is right in here. Sometimes when you lift it up, 
those tiny clips in here around them, they can just break. So don't worry about it. These clips are there for the assembly line that they just put it on top. It goes to the next station and they put the screws in. So those are to just keep it in line. So don't worry about those tiny clips if they break around, all right? So this is the bottom case. Grab a toothbrush and go ahead outside and clean up and blow some dry air through this dust mesh and clean it up. This one is pretty clean, but I'm just gonna do it for you guys. Before we do anything, we're gonna disconnect the battery. You can, some people will say, oh, why don't you disconnect it in the BIOS? Disconnecting the battery inside the BIOS does not cut the circuit, the voltage to the, all the components. And the better one is to just pull this connector back. Grab this gaffer tape that they are left to you right there extra. That's the reason is you just grab it and pull it, pull it towards the battery. So I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna slide it backward. And there we have it. Now we have the battery disconnected. I see two pipe heat, uh, two pipe for a heat sink, and the fan is right over here. I'm gonna grab this one so it's easier to point and lift up his stuff. A plastic spatula or a tweezers. We're gonna first lift up the Wi Fi jacks, lift them up, untangle them across. And here I can't do it because of this bridge cable right in here. So we're gonna lift up this bridge cable like that, lift up the lock 90 degree, slide out the bridge cable, and untangle the bridge cable from the power or extra USB pop right there. And untangle the Wi-Fi, bring it to one side. Now this cable for the fan, you can pull it, but you can wiggle it around and pull it like that. I don't really like that because the cables are really fragile. Let's push it back in. What I do when it's really toughened, jacks or small like that, grab a tweezer, a pointy one. And what you want to do here, let me another one, scratch my table. So what I'm gonna do here is put the, tweezers on the neck of the jack right there, and then just work it around a little bit, and it will come apart like that. So pretty much I'm just grabbing from the side of the jack, or use your fingernails, and slide them back, so that way you don't pull on the cable. So the cables are really not that hard, but for the battery, the cables are really tough, but not this one. All right, next. We're gonna unscrew the fan first. Remove one, two, three screws over the fan. One right there. One right there, one right there. So the screws, they do have a C lock on them, so you just pretty much loose them up. Remove the four screws, or un, I mean, unscrew the screws for the heat sink. Get into the habit of unscrewing, always cross each other. Don't go clockwise or counterclockwise, always do cross each other, that's, that's a good habit. Once you loosen it now, grab it by the neck. Don't grab it from here, otherwise, if the thermal paste is really dry and stick to there, and you pull it from this side, you're gonna bend the tubing right there. So always grab it really close to the heatsink and lift it up from here, bring it upward, and lift it up. And there we have the old thermal paste and the fan right in here. You can just take this uh, with a toothbrush, clean up the dust mesh right in the fan is, and blow some air through the hair. But if you want to go extra mile and clean the, up the inside, maybe yours has been a while and you haven't cleaned, there could be a really dust buildup inside in here. To do that, I will show you in a second. What you want to do, you want to service the fan. You want to remove one, two, three, four screws. They are really tiny. Those are double zero Phillips. Remove those screws right on top. They're really tiny. These screws, they do come out entirely. There we go. Once you remove that one, you can lift up the fan. Let me see. It should get separated like that. You can, these are, this plastic, you can wrap it, but I don't like wrapping it up. You can lift it up like that and bring it over, bend it over, and the fan right there. I use a toothbrush or a tweezer to lift up any clogged uh, hair or whatever you have in there, or uh, use a toothbrush to clean it. This one is pretty clean, so you can clean it. And in here, again, you can clean up gently, get a soft toothbrush, don't get a hard toothbrush, uh, whatever you call this, toothbrush, soft one. And just slowly, gently, just brush it off. Don't force the fan, okay? All right, next is, you wanna put it back together. Don't force it, make sure the screw holes align. Okay, this plastic has to go underneath. There you go. 
And now we're going to put the tiny screw that we removed. You have to be gentle with these fans because after a while they do get really dried up. So you don't want to brush them too hard, just gently and softly. And the screws don't tighten up too hard. You want to just reach it and tiny bit, just really fragile, the plastic, it's a tiny screws. All right. All right, now we're gonna clean up the old thermopaste. Grab a little bit of workshop towel, rip it apart, spray some alcohol, that's enough. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna clean up the CPU. Just wipe, go around like that, lift it up, scoop the old thermopaste, go in between the crystal die, and just nicely use force, don't be too gentle, and look how it just rips apart because of the edge of the crystals, and it will not damage the crystal die. All right, that one is done. So we're gonna they have a little tiny thermal pads in here. These are one millimeter thermal pads. If in case you want to replace them, these are for the power delivery MOSFETs. And but you don't need to if yours is okay, it's not broken or dry. This one is pretty okay. There we go. Now clean up this one and use the dry part to do second pass. Make sure there's no dust particles or anything. You want to grab your thermal paste. You want to put a one drop on the small die and one line on the main die. And people always ask why there's a two crystal die on the CPU. The reason is this one, the bigger die is the CPU, the actual CPU. This small one, it's a PCH chip. On a different models in different brands, they have this PCH chip somewhere around in the other side of the board and they have separate heat sink for it, but in here, they brought it closer to the CPU on the same chip, so they save material and the communication is much faster. All right. So now we're gonna grab the heat sink, align it right over, move the cable out of the way, and bring it down, hold it gently, and you wanna change the bed. You wanna cross and screw them, they have a tiny numbers, one, two, three, four, but as long as you cross screw them, doesn't matter which uh, or what number you go first. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna tighten up the screws for the fan. Connect the fan is very important. Some people always forget it. I do actually sometimes forget it, not some people. But bring these cables all around, tangle them in between the, around the fan. Up, down, down, up. And then open up the lock for the bridge cable, gently bring it down in 45 degree angle inside the connector. And once it's inside, close it down. Okay. These cables, you can just leave it right in between them. You don't have to actually push them really nifty around the fan. What is gonna happen to them? Now this connector cable, you want, doesn't matter which orientation, what uh, color goes where, they're both the same pretty much. You wanna align them over the jack and you wanna push it down and they do a tiny click sound. Or you're gonna feel them, you're not gonna hear it. And that's how you know they just snap in place. There you go. You just make a tiny click up. Don't over push if it's not aligned. Okay. It's pretty much on the bottom is a female pen with a round neck and the other one comes on, it just snaps in. All right, the bridges, the fan, the, this one is connected. Now we're gonna connect the battery. The battery, make sure always align the head of the jack is in front of the connector and then slide it in and you want to pinch it all the way inside the connector. Make sure you grab it somehow from the corners in here of the black plastic and just push it inward. Be careful with the component, don't escape and just try to rip this capacitor. Well, once that one is in place, now you can grab the bottom power, align it over, push in the middle so you can get that hook in there. And then to finish it off, it just tighten up the rest of the screw and the cover is going to be pushed to the palm rest. And if you see any gap opening, just pinch them and it will just snap back to its place. 
Again, I hope you guys like this video and I help you guys to service your Lenovo ThinkPad E15 model, Gen 2. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in the video comments. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.